everyone. Welcome to this technical assistance session on work-based learning. Uh, my name is Kirsten Bayer with the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support at Illinois State University, and I will be your moderator and technical support for this session, so please feel free to reach out to me if you experience any technical difficulties or need anything during the session. A couple of housekeeping things before we get started with Heather Penzak um, with her presentation for this TA session this afternoon. Just wanted to remind everyone that you do have the capability to unmute yourselves on this session, but we ask that you refrain from doing so until the end of the session, where we'll have the opportunity for you to have a live Q&A discussion with Heather. If you do have questions as the session is proceeding, you can feel free to put those in the chat and then um, we will address those. Um, I can interrupt Heather, she's given me free will to do that, so I can address that and kind of help her facilitate that, but we just want to minimize the interruptions as much as possible. Um, Heather is going to be providing this slide deck PowerPoint um, to me, and we will have it up on LNA WorkNet, so you can access this slide deck after the presentation, um, so just please make note of that, and then a reminder that this session is being recorded and it will also be up on the NOFO JTED website along with the slide deck that Heather's providing. So I'll put that notice of funding website in the chat momentarily, um, but you won't see the presentation and recording up there probably until the end of the day today. Um, and then I also wanted to just reiterate that we are offering live closed captioning for accessibility reasons. So if that helps you take notes or if you need it for accessibility reasons, feel free to turn that on, that live closed captioning transcription is available to you. Um, and with that, I think that's all that I have. Please feel free to reach out to me um, if you need anything during this session, but I'm gonna hand it off to Heather to get us started. Wonderful, thank you. And excited to be here with you all today to talk about all things work-based learning. And so my name again is Heather Penzak. I'm a policy and program manager with Education Systems Center. Um, and we work at both the state and the community level to support career pathways and the area that I work in and have expertise in is within the work-based learning space. So we're closely with our partners at the State Board of Education, the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. We'll actually share a resource that I collaborated on with them um, when one of my first days here at Ed Systems. Um, but then also work closely with communities as they're designing and implementing and trying to think about where and how to incorporate high quality, meaningful work-based learning experiences along a continuum um, for their participants. So just to kind of move forward with us here. Within the NOFO, there are some pieces related to work-based learning, and this does not encompass all of them, um, but I did want to just highlight these here, of really thinking about this job seeker focus when designing and when implementing work-based learning. Um, so really thinking about that combination, thinking about how that experience is aligning with whatever education or training pathway that the participant is in, and then where there's really that strong incorporation of essential employability skills. Um, so within work-based learning, regardless of industry area, there are those essential skills that individuals can be gaining and developing and strengthening and maybe even being presented with for the first time. And so really thinking intentionally and calling out how those are happening are so important. And I'll talk a bit about that today as well. Um, but also, also within the employer engagement piece. So where um, you're conducting industry specific events and you're really getting that intentional focus on an industry. And, I'll talk about these and some of the experiences, but where especially that participants can become aware of multiple occupations within an industry area, multiple paths of getting to that occupation is so valuable as they better grapple with what exactly that looks like for them and how they're going to access it and get to that um, you know, sustainable job with a high living wage. And then really thinking through how the employers or external kind of industry partners you work with are engaged deeply with participants. So, you know, I know in the age of Zoom, there's been a lot of like guest panels and guest speakers happening over Zoom, which is great. And it removes barriers like transportation and also, you know, people having to come and present, having to take extra time if they need to travel. But the more that you can get kind of that really intentional engagement, so having employers or industry experts lead workshops, if there's a skill or content or a piece of training that needs to be presented by who might usually be the instructor of those participants, where can an employer come in and either teach that same content or co-teach, right, but really be engaged in showing individuals like what skills are going to be needed and what that looks like within the workplace. And so within Illinois, I'm going to go through just a few different resources that we have here. Um, I'm usually in here just like linking a bunch of stuff in the chat and I can even when we get to questions, um, share this um, 
Google presentation for you all to view before it's even uploaded on the site today, but I know they'll get that up there quickly. But we really have this student centered and so you'll see student, uh, but that refers to any age level of a student, right? Who is an individual engaging in that education? Um, and so what is the individual plan? And then what are those big three components? So what professional learning are they engaging in? That would be the work-based learning. What career-focused instruction are they engaging in? And how are they also academically ready in other pieces to pursue um, more advanced training options? And so there's a lot of different resources about this whole entire piece here, but we're really gonna focus in on that professional learning bucket. Um, and we also have defined through the state are some recommended technical and essential employability competencies. These were developed through really diverse stakeholder groups that represented education, employers, community-based organizations to say, what are those 10 really essential employability competencies that we wanna make sure individuals have to be successful? I know you've all heard this. I think we hear it almost every time we talk about this is that people are necessarily not staying at jobs because they don't have the technical skills. Those can very much be supported and trained at the site but it's those essential employability skills that can be a bit more complex to all of a sudden just deliver if they don't have kind of a base understanding and, and a base knowledge and ability to demonstrate those when they get to an employer and wanna maintain um, that job. And so that document there outlines those. And I provided just a snapshot of them here. Um, so on the left, you can see those essential employability competencies. And on the right is an example of one of the um, industry specific sectors that we've defined competencies for through the state which is the health sciences and technology. So again, really thinking through as you're designing an experience, where can you incorporate you know, a few of these competencies that you really know are gonna be addressed through this work-based learning experience? Um, to incorporate all 10 would be incredible, but also may be difficult, right? But where are you really thinking intentionally about at least like two or three of these? And then others are also being developed as well. And so there is a session um, on the model programs of study guides that we have in Illinois. And so there's eight guides that have been developed so far. And so these kind of go through the whole picture. So the courses that an individual would take in high school leading into post-secondary. Uh, but through these guides, there also is alignment and shows where that work-based learning should be incorporated within each sector and calls out some different resources and examples of that. Um, so just wanted to flag them here and kind of show how all these pieces start connecting together as you might have heard from my colleague Juan Jose earlier on this um, session. And so within Illinois, what we have is this work-based learning continuum. And so a, a piece that I really like to discuss a lot is this idea of a continuum. So starting at the beginning here where you have some career awareness happening, um, you know, that individual is starting to maybe take some surveys, watch some videos, grapple with what it is that they're interested in doing, what's kind of piquing their interest, where they see their skills and passions aligning um, to industry areas and occupations. And then they're moving into, as you can see on the bottom, that increasing intensity of employer engagement. So more and more, whoever is delivering the training or the instruction, they're always involved in the process, but more and more that employer or that industry expert should really be the one taking a lead, mentoring, providing um, insights and coaching and really helping that individual develop their essential and technical skills through these work-based learning experiences. Um, and so what we're gonna do today within this session is we're gonna talk through kind of those, those three in the middle. So the career exploration, team-based challenge and career development experiences that are all kind of leading up and getting into those even more robust um, youth apprenticeship, pre-apprenticeship um, or even apprenticeship type programs. As I talk about career development experiences, there are a lot of pieces within that that are applicable to an apprenticeship program. Um, and I'll share a resource with you as well that could help um, inform and kind of inspire and provide some resources for apprenticeship programs. So we're not gonna get into detail on those today. And so there are these resources, you, if you kind of noticed on the last one, it mentioned that all these different experiences are defined of, within the Career Pathways Dictionary. Again, this was established through diverse stakeholder groups here in Illinois. And the really, the goal of it was to say, you know, we talk about internships a lot. We talk about guest speakers a lot. We talk about all these different experiences, but really what do we want to say as a state and how do we want to define what those experiences are, that kind of minimum threshold for quality. So within a career exploration, what that definition is, I'll talk about team-based challenge and I'll also talk about career development experiences, but there's a lot of context here and background and additional definitions um, that would be helpful to you all as you're kind of getting the big picture um, of these different state frameworks, definitions, and resources here in Illinois. 
And the Career Development Experience Toolkit, this was the resource I mentioned earlier that I wrote in collaboration with the State Board of Education here and the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity to really support individuals to and through the process of implementing, designing, um, going through a career development experience. I'm gonna dive into more detail on this later, but we really do have these robust resources here in Illinois to help support alignment to those different state frameworks and those state definitions. And again, please feel free to stop me at any moment here. Um, if I'm going quickly through something and you'd like me to re-explain it, I'm very happy to do that. And so what we're gonna do is actually explore Illinois' work-based learning continuum. Um, and as I get into these different definitions and pieces that we're doing, I do wanna also say that within the state, we have this work-based learning innovation network. It was launched back in October of 2020, really to bring folks together, talk about the models, the best practices that, we're do that they're doing, um, especially in the moment when so many things shifted virtually and really understand what are those innovative practices and what are those practices that are ultimately creating broader, more equitable access, especially as we're thinking about our underrepresented populations who aren't typically accessing these experiences um, with our Black and Latinx populations and how do we make sure that they're recruited intentionally, they're supported intentionally, and they're really provided access to be successful and learn about themselves through these work-based learning experiences. Um, and in this too, we identify needs if there's policy changes or support systems that are needed at the state level. Um, it's been a really great group. So as you're grappling with your work-based learning and trying to think through how this should all look, um, we're going to be hosting sessions throughout the year that are going to be industry focused with experiences all along the continuum um, and would love for you to join those. And so I just wanted to mention that because there's a lot of resources out there as some of this might be overwhelming as you're seeing it maybe for the first time or you're remembering all these different pieces and kind of refreshing yourself. Um, lots of spaces out there to support you in your work. And so we're going to start at the beginning um, with career exploration and the definition here from the Illinois Career Pathways Dictionary is an activity such as a job shadow, attendance at a career exposition or employer site visit, providing an individual with the ability to engage directly with employers for the purpose of gaining knowledge of one or more industry sectors or occupations. So again, the definition within the Illinois Career Pathways Dictionary is broad, but it's really um, saying, how do we think intentionally about the minimum threshold for quality within this, right? So there should be direct engagement with employers. Um, there should also be gaining knowledge of one or more industry sectors or occupations. They're not just learning about one job, one industry, um, but if it is an industry focused, how are they learning about multiple occupations within that industry? Um, if it is kind of maybe more like occupation focused, are there some different industries that, that occupation could also be seen in? Um, and I see kind of a question here about including organizations that represent persons with disabilities in the development of these models. Are you referring to um, the models through IWIN? Because we've had like different presenters and but would love to any recommendations for folks to come in and present to that network on their models that directly serve um, persons with disabilities. Yeah, I, I was asking because you were saying you were representing a wide uh, community in those discussions and in the in the session this morning I really didn't get much that was focused on people with disabilities um, I think they're uh, a large underrepresented group in our in our workforce uh, we still have 70 percent unemployment rate of people with disabilities uh, close to 90 percent for those uh, that are minorities with disabilities so I, I guess in all of these sessions, I've been struggling to see how you focus some of these efforts on, on that population as well, because uh, in this morning, for example, all I got was it, it's about accommodations, but I think it's a little more than that. So just continuing to ask the question. No, and I appreciate that. I think you should always problematize people. <laughs> um, but so, I mean, within the Career Development Experience Toolkit, there's some different models and resources outlined through there. Um, I'll explain later too, we created a companion piece that's supposed to um, more broadly represent different populations, but I, I know that there's always room to include more models and be more intentional. And so again, if there are folks that you know who are doing this well, working with uh, persons with disabilities and serving them intentionally in work-based learning, would love to either get connected with them or, or get contact information and reach out and make sure that their um, voices are included. Well, I, I would entertain the Chicago Lighthouse for the blind and persons with visual disabilities because um, 
you know, in, in, in a lot of these programs, um, assistive technology is, is kind of an afterthought and, and it's hard to integrate people into workplace settings if it's not built with them in mind. So, um, yep. you know, some of this um, may be redundant, but I guess I feel like I need to say it. So thank you. No, absolutely. And I mean, the session today is going to be more kind of like broadly applicable best practices, right, that would then need to be adapted to fit the context and fit the needs um, of the different populations and people that you're working with. Um, but again, just trying to give kind of a landscape understanding of as you're thinking about kind of designing each of these experiences, like what are the things that you should always keep top of mind? Um, but then again, definitely always a need to dig deeper into that and have specific call outs and resources for those populations. And thanks, Thank I see that Lisa is reaching out to them and I work closely with Lisa, so definitely continue to connect on that and make sure we continue to incorporate those innovative models that are serving a wide variety of people. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. And I can put, I'll have my contact information here too, but we'll let the chat for there as well. Um, so within career exploration, just kind of highlighting some best practices and models, I'm gonna give you a bunch of links to resources here. You know, again, thinking through where that direct engagement is, um, where participants have opportunities to meet one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. Again, really thinking through the people that you're working with and where their comfort levels are. Sometimes it's really good to meet one-on-one. -on -one. There can be a lot of anxiety if someone's in a group that they don't wanna ask a question in front of them. Um, but sometimes in the group that can also kind of quell that as well, kind of depending on um, how they feel in that space. You know, you might hear others asking questions that inspire you to ask questions, or you might kind of want to meet individually, but ultimately they should just really be able to ask questions, hear directly, not be watching something that is a recording, but hear from someone live and learning about like, do they like their job? What do they get paid? What hours are they working? What benefits do they have? How did they get there? Right, all the things we wanna know as we think about our quality of life and the life we wanna lead um, and the careers that we're interested in as well. Um, also engaging you know, youth or I think even just like younger folks in the space who have experience in the industry area. Um, thinking about your college students, thinking about anyone in post-secondary who maybe isn't necessarily like a full-fledged employer yet, but has experience in the pathway, is working through it, um, it could really be a resource who's actually in the moment going through the post-secondary training and courses for something. They recently completed like an internship, for example, with an employer. Um, sometimes those can be really helpful. I like to even call them, you know, like an alumni panel sometimes, right? Someone who's been through your program, they've gone through it, and they can kind of speak um, to the incoming participants about what that looks like. And then as mentioned earlier, you know, really having industry experts, right? So I think a lot of times we think about our formal employers, um, but we have a lot of industry experts, both within our spaces and within organizations as well, like our community-based organizations, our post-secondary institutions, um, and really where they can come in and partner with whoever is kind of that consistent instructor to facilitate workshop, leave time for questions. Um, we've seen a lot of great career exploration experiences that we're incorporating both like, you know, a typical kind of like private corporate employer, also with a post-secondary space to say, hey, this employer is telling you about all these occupations. And this post-secondary institution is going to tell you about all the different paths that you can have to get there and access um, these different occupations within that employer. So connecting those two pieces within a career exploration event can be really valuable. But I would say, you know, really thinking about that participant engagement um, is where you're having that kind of before, during, and after. So prepping participants before the event, having them do some research on who they might be talking to, what organization they might be talking to, even coming up with questions or things that they wanna know more about in advance. Um, so often I've worked with individuals, they get to the career exploration and they don't even know what to ask, right? Because it, it can be kind of like, I don't know, you just told me a bunch of stuff and I don't know what to say. Um, but if you give them some time to process and go through those pieces um, before they get to that, it's more likely that they'll ask really meaningful questions that are gonna help problematize and help them think through their plan. Um, but then during too, like thinking how you can have people coordinating events, um, helping to facilitate conversations, making sure that participants can be connected with individuals afterwards, um, whether through, you know, even making like mock business cards for them or making sure they have a LinkedIn profile or something similar. Or they, they're on an online site before they get to the events, they can quickly connect with that employer. Um, and then really spending some intentional time afterward to reflect on the experience. What insights did they gain? What questions are still remaining? Um, how is this informing as they continue to think about their path? 
and what kind of like training currently post-secondary additional training additional experiences that they're going to need to access that as they continue to gather interest in that career and so linking here again um, just a whole lot of different resources for you all so you know thinking through um, jff jobs for the future they have a really great kind of planning tool it's got some different terms than we have here in illinois but it's very much aligned to what we define as a career exploration experience um, completed or put in some pieces here too from a toolkit that Chicago Public Schools recently created and I worked in partnership with them um, that is all aligned to the definitions that we have in that career pathways dictionary um, and then some different design templates and there's a recording here as well that's a bit longer than what's being shared right now and these kind of five-ish minutes or so about career exploration that really dives deeply into career exploration it's facilitated by me um, and it dives into different models, additional best practices, and additional resources and ways to get connected. Um, so I'll have those for each of these experiences on the continuum if you want to look at that video and dive into a certain experience in more detail. And then looped in some different resources here too from the resource hub that we have through the Illinois Workplace Learning Innovation Network. So before I shift to team-based challenges, you know, would love to hear any questions about those or if you all have other like resources or best practices that you would flag here um, for folks who might be considering putting in a career exploration, either designing something totally new or enhancing something that you currently have, um, please feel free to share those best practices and resources or, or ask questions. I'll keep us moving, but um, the chat is there. Please feel free to use the chat. I have it up. I'm taking a look at it as I go. Um, I know I'll be pinged if I miss something as well as I might be yammering on. Um, so within team-based challenges, this is where, again, you're moving along the continuum, and now you're really having individuals gaining more um, hands-on. They're working directly with a problem. Here, I'll read the definition. Apologies. Um, so a team-based challenge is a group problem-based learning project relating to an individual's career area of interest that involves a problem relating to employers within that area, including mentoring from adults with expertise in that area, and requires the individual to present the outcomes of the project. What I would say here, I think one of my favorite parts about a team-based challenge is that it can be this really great opportunity that's preparing participants and gearing them up to go participate in a more formal um, career development experience, like an internship or a youth apprenticeship but it gives them a moment working in a team, working with an industry mentor to start to solve that problem, work through it. It's all very driven by them. So they are the student, they are the one driving this work, they are the researcher, right? Um, and so this can even be too for employers that maybe you're trying to get to offer more robust internships, but they're just not quite there yet. They don't quite understand what value your participants might bring. This can be a really great opportunity to show them like they have value, they have expertise, they have knowledge, they have experience. They can, you can give us an industry problem or you might have a stock one um, that you kind of use with your partners and you can really showcase how your participants can bring that expertise, that knowledge, that value and really help these employers solve the different challenges and, and problems and items that they want to address. So it's a really great kind of in-between opportunity before someone is put in a more robust um, career development experience. And so again, best practices, really thinking about those mentoring from adults with expertise, right? Who are those? They definitely are those employer partners, right? You're kind of like corporate private partners, but they also are very much your post-secondary partners, community-based organizations, even thinking about what staff you have in-house, right? Within these organizations, we have multiple departments who are working through pieces um, in different industry areas, right? And so where can we even utilize some of the staff that we have? Um, if there's coursework, especially kind of like introductory level pieces that you're offering, it's a really great opportunity to embed it within that. Um, introductory courses can be, I don't know, they can be a little bit like drier for individuals, right? It's just kind of like presenting them with the initial information and getting them oriented to it. And so if you can incorporate something like this that really has them working independently, is very driven by them, and they're already getting connected with that social capital and being connected with actual industry experts and employers in the area, it can continue to help them stay connected to that pathway, stay connected to the, that coursework or that training that they're in. Um, and also, again, build that network and maybe even secure like a part-time job while they're still in school. Um, but again, really thinking through where there's existing opportunities, existing models, 
um, any professional associations that you can work with. There's a lot of folks who have a lot of kind of like case studies, problems teed up that would be ready to go for a team-based challenge. And so I really like to think about, you know, that, that student experience. So if you're engaging in a team-based challenge, you're engaging as a student, you're engaging as a learner, um, you're identifying a problem, you're doing research, developing a plan, evaluating, re-examining, and then presenting and reflecting on that, right? It's very much driven by those participants and not by the industry mentor and not by the instructor of this space, right? The industry mentor is, as you can see, kind of in these stars that I've put on here, they're providing input. So, you know, when they do their research, the participants might present that to the mentor and they're like, hey, you actually should look at like these other things, right, as you're developing your plan. They develop their plan. The mentor says like, hey, you should think about a couple of these other pieces too. Like this wouldn't actually quite work that way in the world, right? And then ultimately they would present to their mentors as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this really can be a great kind of transition experience into that more robust career development experience. It's not a big lift on those industry mentors maybe about an hour per week, right? Where they're spending, you know, 30 minutes reviewing any materials that the participants set to them. Maybe they're spending 30 minutes um, through a Zoom or a phone call, or maybe even in person meeting and providing feedback. But again, this is a great transition activity into those um, internship type experiences. But they really are self-directed by those participants. You're engaging them as students and learners in this space, and they're really driving um, how they want to address that problem. Great um, problem solving and critical thinking skills for sure. And so linked again on that iWin Resource Hub, we have a lot of different ideas for inspiration. We have full-fledged templates built out by communities who are doing this with their employer partners um, and all the different kind of endorsement areas that we have here in Illinois. And so you can see like this one um, is a fully wrote out plan. Other ones, you'll see that there's different ideas for inspiration. So we have kind of both options for you as you might want to kick something like this off in your space. And I always like to provide lots of links, lots of resources, <laughs> anything as you have some time to look through, see what they're up to and how that might fit into your space. I don't know, I hear someone off mute. I don't know if someone has a question. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go into the career development experiences. And yes, Emily, I'll put the, um, I'll go through this and I'll, I'll turn my camera off that, or I'll turn my screen share off then um, to get a link to this and, and put it in the chat for you all. Um, and yeah, I mean, examples of for-profit businesses doing career development placement, there's, there's tons of examples in that. So in the different resources that are being shared here, um, you know, there's lots of folks who have either you know, as part of their like social impact, they want to do this, or they just find it meaningful to do. They have great partnerships with the different organizations and schools that they're working with. Um, there's very much a mix of different partners who are engaged in these experiences. And, and there's examples of that kind of provided throughout the resources linked here. Um, and so in career development experiences, these would be, I know, kind of like looking through the NOFO, um, like your work experiences or your internships. Career development experiences is really like a broad bucket term that incorporates a lot of different experiences. So again, we're moving along the continuum here. This is really the opportunity where you have individuals gaining or um, engaging really independently. So they're showing up to a host site, um, they're performing those technical, those essential skills, they're getting supervised, they're getting assessed, um, but they should also be getting mentored and coached throughout. So we actually host interns within our space all the time. Um, and I really think a lot about, you know, it should be almost 50 50 in a way sometimes, right? 50% of the time of that intern is doing kind of work product for me or for our team. Um, but 50% of the time, I'm engaging them in additional skills or additional opportunities for them to develop those essential and technical skills, right? And maybe it varies from 50 to 50 from time to time, um, but it should continue to be a learning process. And yes, Tina, to that point, um, can the team-based challenge happen while the participant is in their elected job training or pre-apprenticeship program? I would very much encourage that, right? Um, you're thinking about these participants, they're getting a lot of information thrown at them that they're having to digest and soak in and grapple with. Um, and the team-based challenge can actually be a really great opportunity to like cement that information in a way that now, again, it's driven by them. So they have to take what they're learning. They have to take this guidance from their industry mentor and they themselves have to come up with how to address this challenge, this problem, this issue, this concern, right? Um, 
as we all know, within our jobs, we're not just given like an assessment at the end of the day to see if we can do our job well, right? I'm not given a test on implementing work-based learning, but I am having to solve, um, you know, complex challenges as communities are grappling with things, having to think through, do some research, figure out a plan, try that plan out, doesn't quite work, go back, try something else, right? So in this real space, when they're in their occupations, they're in their careers, they're going to be faced with things that don't have an exact answer. And so a team-based challenge can really help them um, grapple with that within the industry area that they're, they're training or doing their work-based learning in. They do take um, a shift though, right, in a mindset. So like the instructor um, who is maybe delivering the training or who's helping coordinate support, something like a pre-apprenticeship or work-based learning program, you know, I think when I think back to how I've been taught, and as you all think back to maybe how you've been taught, um, there can tend to be a lot of kind of like, I deliver information as the instructor and you take it in and like regurgitate it through a test or an assessment, right? And so a team-based challenge is a bit of a mindset shift where now that instructor, that coordinator is more kind of facilitating things and making sure that the participants are getting things in on time, um, but the participants are, are becoming the experts and they're becoming the ones who are saying how to solve something and that facilitator, that coordinator has no real answer, right? They have expertise and insight and can kind of help problematize with the participants, but it's really engaging those participants as experts in that field. All right, babbled on about team-based challenges, but I just like them a lot. <laughs> um, so here is the definition for a career development experience. And again, this is a broad term that encompasses a lot of things. Um, but from the Illinois Career Pathways Dictionary, it is a supervised work experience relating to an individual's career area of interest that occurs in a workplace or under other authentic working conditions. That one for sure, I think as we saw kind of this virtual space this past year, really thinking more intentionally about what is an authentic working condition? Can something be done virtually or hybrid um, and still be authentic and represent what would be occurring in that workplace? It's co-developed by an education provider and at least one employer in the relevant field. Again, making sure that you're addressing the objectives of whatever training or courses um, or program that that participant is in, while also addressing as they might leave this program, what are the skills, what are their needs on the employer side? That's gonna make sure that they're ready to go. They're gonna be ready for kind of like day one success to then continue to have additional professional development and support from that employer. It provides compensation or educational credit to the participant. This for sure is a big one as you're getting to these types of experiences. These participants, these individuals, they are providing work product back to an employer, back to that host site, right? So they're still learning, they're still getting coaching and developing skills, but they are doing work. And that, um, that host site, that employer is benefiting from that. So there should be compensation or educational credit. Um, reinforces foundational professional skills, including at a minimum, those outlined in the essential employability skills framework. Again, back to that document that I shared earlier that has those 10 outlined competencies. Um, includes a professional skills assessment that assesses skill development and is utilized as a participant feedback tool. So you might have an assessment that you use in your space. Um, there's some different examples included in the toolkit that I'll, I'll mention here again in a moment. Um, but really just having that moment where that participant is getting assessed. So how did they do? Where are they showing some real strengths and some really like wins and providing value as they're engaging in their career development experience? And where are there some opportunities for growth? Some opportunities where they might need some additional um, coaching or maybe they need to practice that skill more times. And it should really be what it says here, a participant feedback tool. Um, so this should not just be a one-sided conversation where that you know, host supervisor or host mentor um, at the career development experience site is just telling the individual like where they're going wrong and what they're doing well, but it should be kind of a back and forth. So the participant can even reflect on how they're performing um, and see if that's matching with that host mentor um, or see where it's not matching too and have a conversation about that and allow kind of that question and, and feedback kind of back and forth from both. And then taking place for a minimum of 60 total hours. So Again, I'll kind of show this slide here. So you see lots of different things that are considered CDEs or career development experiences. Um, and that 60 hours is again saying like, to really think through and have an individual engage deeply in an industry area and performing independently, getting assessed, um, then they really should 
participate in at least 60 hours. And you can see, um, you know, some communities will do micro internships. So they'll do two kind of like 30 hour internships. Um, others will take this through maybe a summer or over a semester. Maybe they're doing like 10 hours per week, right? Um, but really getting that 60 hours and, and having that individual spend time um, within that industry performing independently is really valuable. And so you have lots and lots of models of these, right? And these are um, just some of the pieces here to kind of think through, you know, you've got your typical internships, the, the tasks might change by the day or by the week. Um, you've got kind of your micro internships, like I mentioned before, and these tend to be very project-based, right? So there might be a specific thing that an employer needs, like um, seeing some examples of they need to create like a new kind of guidance manual. They need to like edit it. They need to get feedback from the different um, people on their team, get some feedback, incorporate that feedback. Is that manual still serving their needs, right? And so then that could be a project that someone could work on pretty independently with some insights too from that mentor. Um, really thinking a lot too there, like what are the things that as you're talking to different partners, either internally, externally, um, where is there stuff that they just wish they had time to research or complete? Um, and how could you use this project-based internship for that? I really love um, CDEs that do departmental rotations. So again, really exposing um, them to the different industry area or the different occupations within an industry area and how they could maybe go to two or three different departments. You know, if you think 60 hours, maybe they're spending 20 hours um, within each. In-house opportunities, again, thinking through your organization, thinking through your space. Do you have departments that meet um, the career area of interest within that your participant wants to engage in? that you could actually offer in-house, especially if you're offering that experience for the first time. This can be a really good way to test out that model for the first time. And also thinking too, is your participant working somewhere? Is, do they work with someone who could potentially align with those competencies, both essential and technical competencies that you want them to address? Um, and they could serve as that mentor, they could complete that professional skills assessment, um, and that participant could stay within their job, but engaging in more maybe advanced tasks or more really career focused tasks that they're developing those skills in that area. I see a question about um, can participants receive a stipend while they're in their internship or job training program? Yes, absolutely. So the compensation piece itself is not necessarily defined. Um, so it could be an hourly pay, it could be a stipend. Um, I know in some situations, folks have had to call it like a scholarship for different kind of like um, budgeting reasons, right? But there is that compensation provided to the participant. I think I, what I would just think through a bit, and this isn't necessarily like a, an easy thing to think through, but what I saw happening in some internships, you know, especially in this past year, is as folks had gained jobs, and if the internships were going to require them to leave their job for any purpose, like that internship was difficult for them to want to take if it was going to pay less than what their current part or full-time job was going to pay. So I think either thinking about where you can do a flexible model, um, where that individual might be able to engage like before or after their work or have flexible hours or do kind of a hybrid model um, would be great. Or if it can pay, you know, the same amount and be connecting them to employment after or, or know that they can return to their job maybe after that internship experience, depending how long it is. But I know that's been something that communities are grappling with quite a bit is making sure that, you know, there is value in an internship, the connections that you're making, the skills that you're getting, uh, but there is a real monetary financial need that participants have as well. And I'm not going to go through each of this piece here, um, but I do just like to put up this, this table here as you're thinking about offering a career development experience. There's pieces within each stage that you really have to go through. And I've just kind of flagged some of the main ones here for you. So as you go from getting started all the way to wrapping up, um, and there are resources. I am going to talk about this toolkit here in just a moment that take you through each stage of implementation of this. Um, the toolkit is actually organized by these different sections. So you might feel really strong and you're getting started or outreach space, but you really want to dive into like onboarding. What does your onboarding practices currently look like and how would you like to think differently about them and improve them? Um, but lots of moving pieces when you're doing a career development experience and just really important that you and your team are all on the same page, your partners are on the same page, you know what the timeline, the expectations are, and you have those really intentional supports and check-ins um, provided throughout and also opportunities to gather feedback, gather testimonials, how things went. So you can come back, you can adjust as needed 
um, but you can also market and talk about your program as you have those testimonials from your participants and from your employers. And so what it looks like um, for a participant experience in the CDE, I've said these things a bit already, um, but the biggest piece here is that exposure to a new environment and new expectations, um, especially if someone has never participated in an internship type experience before, you know, now working at this employer who knows that you're in this program, but you've had some career focused coursework, you have some previous even work based learning experience, right, they're going to have certain expectations, they're going to communicate a little bit differently than the instructors or coordinators that that individual might have already worked with. And so it really pushes folks out of their comfort zone um, and engages them deeply again in that industry area. But there really should be that authentic quality engagement with professionals that, that should really help participants grapple with what their college career pathways look like, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that they're getting directed towards a four-year university degree, right? But they are getting directed towards a path that is gonna lead them towards that living wage, that sustainable high growth job, um, and they're understanding all the different ways to do that. And by hearing directly from folks in that industry who have gotten to a job in a variety of ways um, is really impactful for them to understand how to access and, and get those opportunities. But they really should be valued as resources of talent who have background knowledge, who have expertise. You know, as they're coming into an internship type experience here, it's very likely that participants have engaged in that career focused coursework. They're aware of technical components also very likely that they've done previous work-based learning, they've grappled with this, um, they really know this is something that they want to do, right? So by the time they're engaging in a career development experience, they have value. They can provide expertise when they go into those spaces. And so um, the Career Development Experience Toolkit, it's, it's a long document. It's over 100 pages. Um, so it really does, again, if this is something that you're implementing, um, very much encourage you to look through it and see those different pieces. Um, within there, but it really just just help establish expectations for implementing those high quality experiences. A lot of these materials could be used within a team based challenge or career exploration or even in those apprenticeship type opportunities as well. Um, it's just specific to the career development experience, but a lot of them can be modified and applicable to others. Um, but also all throughout the different questions about thinking through like different populations, thinking through those for profit companies. Um, there's lots of models all throughout their resources, their insights, descriptions of their models included all throughout this toolkit. And so within there, there's different resources. So there's the actual like PDF document. Um, if you want to read a hundred some page document and kind of flip through it, I like to call it sometimes my memoir of managing a high school internship program. Um, but there's also a website. So the website is really nice because you can go on and you can actually just go to a certain section and go all the way down to the bottom and access all these custom customizable templates. So there's Word documents included throughout that you can download and edit. Um, one of the biggest kind of you know bandwidth pieces is just creating some of these materials and documents. So really hope that you can take the resources that are on the toolkit site, repurpose them, adapt them to what fits your needs um, and not have to spend um, hours kind of starting from scratch and completing like a host profile or kind of like participant assessment. There's all those different pieces on here. Um, we have additional resources too. So recently kind of worked and talked to different stakeholders within um, the career development experience space, both in Illinois and some national models as well. And so this is a companion piece to that larger toolkit. Um, and that's meant to provide additional resources and really addressing the needs of stakeholders outside of that traditional kind of high school setting. Um, so the toolkit itself is broad, it's universally applicable, but the companion piece dives in a bit deeper, thinking about workforce development organizations, community-based organizations, and alternative high schools. So there's additional resources and models and templates in there, um, as you might be working in one of those stakeholder spaces. And then again, some additional um, recordings, templates, and resources here for you all. But that is what I have. Um, I'm going to actually stop sharing from, oh, big alert went up on my computer here. <laughs> um, and let me get the link to this so you actually can view it now if you would like to see it, but I know it's gonna get uploaded um, to the site as well. But if you're wanting to go into these links here, I will put that for you. Any questions or again, like 
pieces where, you know, maybe you didn't see reflected and you would love to see additional information on. Um, talking about how transitional jobs might fit into the continuum. You know, I think I need to know more about transitional jobs or if anyone has expertise in that area and could respond to that question. Yeah, Emily, I don't know if you want to provide a, a little context on um, like how you define a transitional job, but I can kind of talk through that. Sure, thanks. Um, so uh, I know the way our agency, we one of our contracts is for transitional jobs and they're generally um, jobs at which we can place folks, but then the contract are, is paying for their, like their salary. They're usually like eight months long um, and it's like, full pay, but, you know, the company is not paying it, the, you know, through, through us, the contract is paying it. Sure. I mean, I could see that easily counting as a career development experience, right? If I'm thinking about it correctly. Um, and so I'm not sure, you know, within your current program or within what usually happens. Yeah. So there are paid internships, right? So where there are those components of the six in here, I can get this up on the screen again, really quickly. Um, if that transitional job meets these six pieces, right, then that very much would account along the continuum as a career development experience. And so sometimes what I've seen communities do is like they have this experience that almost fits it, but maybe they need to incorporate a certain piece, like, for example, the 60 hours, but yours very much sounds like more than 60 hours, right, over eight months. Um, but maybe there's a professional skills assessment that you might need to incorporate in there, um, to qualify it as a career development experience. Is that helpful or is there kind of a different question? Yeah, that is helpful, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and to Martha's piece too, I think that's very much like where they have their coaching, where they have their job search support. Um, again, it sounds like there's compensation in all those pieces as well too. Great question. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we can we're allowed to provide bus cards for transportation to and from training. Are you allowed to? Yes. Um, oh, Lisa says yes. I was going to say if you can, that's wonderful. <laughs> the more that you can take away that cost from individuals to get to their experience, the better. But yeah, looks like Lisa said yes. You can do that. Oh, okay, and so and, and so in terms of offering the stipend or scholarship, you know, however we want to frame it, uh, that's allowable uh, while they're doing or pursuing or completing their internship. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that travel wouldn't be their payment. That's just covered by you all. They'd be receiving, I assume, additional compensation in addition to getting their transportation covered. Yes. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and being able to cover that is just so wonderful. I know I worked with students here in Chicago and I mean, they're spending a good chunk of money each day working four days a week, just getting back and forth on the train and bus and however many things they need to take. So when that could be covered, it's, it's really valuable. Great, excellent, thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Um, I see Martha's question about including an educational provider. Yeah, I mean, you really do wanna think through kind of, you know, what are those kind of related um, courses, related training, or just thinking through how are you aligning what they're doing at their work site with what might be expected of them through a certification course or through a post-secondary path, right? So that they're kind of getting both sides of that. Um, they're getting the employer perspective and also that training perspective um, through education. Do we, should we include maybe uh, a letter of support from our academic partner? With their proposal it won't hurt yeah no i think that would be great i mean showing it's always really valuable when you can see who your partners are and show that they're committed and show even how they're thinking about it right because that means you've had conversations right and you are starting to get on the same page and, and have a, a space where you all are meeting and collaborating absolutely thank you
we have time here. Um, if there's any additional questions or I can hang here too if you all want to head out, <laughs> um, but have a question to ask. But thank you all. Please, I I'll put my information. I thought it had it on slide, but I'll I'll add it to it. It's a Google one, so it should update. But here is my info. Um, in case you want to reach out about anything work-based learning, I love to talk work-based learning. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you all. I'll hang on for a moment if there's any questions, but otherwise have a wonderful rest of your Monday. Me too. Mm. Mm.